Welcome to this second part of the demo on configuring application blueprints. In this demo, we will look at reusing existing services in application blueprints and deployments. Not all applications will be constructed of 100% greenfield components. Sometimes new applications need to work with existing load balancers, databases, etc. Such pre-configured services are called external services. During this demo, we are going to show how application blueprints and deployments in vCloud Automation Center can reuse existing services. The first step is to model a new service under the external services section in the catalog. The next step is to configure the deployment environment to use the external service. A deployment environment encapsulates external services, policies, and configuration management instances. Then the external service is included in an application blueprint. At deployment time, the external service can be fulfilled by different providers, depending on where the application is provisioned. The final step is to choose a provider for the external service at deployment time. Note that there are two external services in this system, v Postgres SQL database and a load balancer. All objects are version in the product. Therefore, when we say external service, it really indicates a version of a particular external service. The catalog administrator models a new external service in the catalog. Depending on how complex the external service is, it can be modeled as a basic or as advanced external service. Let's look at a basic external service. This is an example of a basic external service. Similar to a normal service in the catalog, it has properties and actions. It has to be modeled as an external service so that it is handled appropriately by the provisioning engine during deployment time. Now, let's look at an example of an advanced external service version under the same parent external service. Notice that an advanced external service will also have properties similar to the basic type. However, unlike a basic external service, there are no actions. Instead, an advanced external service can be fulfilled by different service providers. Each of these providers will have their own custom properties and scripts. When configuring a deployment environment to use the advanced service, a particular provider will have to be selected from the available ones. Now let's look at a provider specification under this advanced external service version for the vPostgres database. A provider specification will have properties and scripts specific to that provider. For instance, a vPostgres database can be provided by a data director server running on premise or an Amazon RDS instance running on a public cloud. Each of these would be modeled as a provider specification for the external service. Now that we have looked in detail at the external service, let's look at how to include this in a deployment environment. A deployment environment has sections to specify application policies, external services, and configuration management tools like Puppet Master. We'll focus on the external services section for the purpose of this demo. In this deployment environment, we have registered a vPostgres external service instance by specifying who will provide that service. An instance of Data Director version 2.5 will provide a vPostgres DB to any application that is using this deployment environment. In this manner, a deployment environment can be restricted to use only an existing, approved, and hardened database server. In addition, policies can be defined to prevent provisioning of any new database server in this deployment environment. An example of application policies will be shown in a separate demo. Let's now see how to use an external service in an application. Till now, we've defined the database as an external service and specified that in the deployment environment, this database will be provided by an instance of data director. There's a separate video that explains the process of creating blueprints in detail. In this video, we'll focus on using an external service in the blueprint. Notice that in the canvas, there is a section on external services towards the right. 
This section will list all available external services in the catalog. Adding an external service to the application is the same drag and drop operation as for other components. In this blueprint, a normal JBoss application server is connected to an externally available database. We haven't said who will supply the actual database instance in the blueprint, but we've specified a dependency between the application server and the database server. Therefore, at deployment time, the application server will not be provisioned till the database instance is made available by the provider configured in the deployment environment. Now that all the pieces are in place, let's see what happens when an application blueprint that models an external service is deployed. Let's deploy the Duke Spang application version 2.5 and look at the deployment wizard. In the first step of deploying an application, the list of providers available for an external service are shown. This is the time to choose one and only one of the available providers of the database service. In this case, let's choose the only available provider from the list. Except for the step of choosing a provider, the remainder of the deployment wizard flow remains the same as for other applications. By selecting a provider, its properties such as username, password, etc. will be automatically fed to the Java application deployed on the JBoss server. This automatic passing of property values across the tiers is a huge differentiator for the blueprints and deployments. Once the deployment finishes, the application server will have connected to the existing database in the environment. External services promote reuse of existing resources and are used when new services may not be provisioned in certain environments. For example, firewalls and load balancers will usually exist in a production environment and may not be provisioned anew. Therefore, any applications that are being provisioned must connect to these existing services. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope it was informative. To learn more about vCloud Automation Center, there are additional videos available.